Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about prayers, and this time we'll talk about a prayer called the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Like the Rosary, a lot of other prayers are involved in saying this one, and like the Rosary, it's usually said using rosary beads. I'll be describing what prayers are said on what beads as we go through the prayers, but there are a few prayers in here that we haven't heard before. First, for the crucifix, we make the sign of the cross. Then, for the first large bead, there are some optional prayers as follows. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls. A straightforward way of explaining that Jesus died to save us from our sins and open the path to salvation for us. And the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. Thanks to Jesus, God is able to bestow his boundless mercy on anyone in the world, if they're open to it. O oh, fount of life! Jesus is the very source of all life. Unfathomable divine mercy! No human being can fully chart the infinite depths of the mercy of God. Envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. We ask for God to bestow his merciful graces on everyone as fully as possible for our benefit. After that prayer, we say the following short prayer three times. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. Jesus shed his blood on the cross out of mercy for us so that we could be saved. The water that's mentioned here is the water that came out of his body when he was stabbed with a spear while still on the cross, as it says in John 19.34. Next, we move on to the first three small beads. For the first small bead, we recite the Lord's Prayer. For the second small bead, we recite the Hail Mary. For the third, we recite the Apostles' Creed. Then, on the large bead after that, we say the following prayer. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity, of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. The Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, and by saying this prayer, we ask God to make use of this perfect sacrifice and our participation in it to defeat the evil of sin, both our own sins and sins all over the world. Next, we move on to the ten small beads, after the large medal. For each of those ten beads, we say the following. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Because of the passion and death of Jesus, and the great merit that he gained through his sacrifice, we plead with God to show mercy on us as individuals, as a group, and to show mercy on the world. For the next large bead, we recite the Lord's Prayer. Then we repeat the last couple of steps, saying, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, and so on, for each small bead, and the Lord's Prayer for each large bead, until we've gone all the way around the rosary beads and returned to the disc-shaped metal. There we say this prayer. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One. We recognize God's purity, His power, and His undying nature before we ask Him for anything. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Once again, we continue the theme of pleading with God for mercy, both for ourselves and for the world. Finally, there's an optional closing prayer which goes like this. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible. A few things are said here, that God is eternal, and that his mercy and compassion are infinite. All of this is meant to express the greatness of God. Look kindly upon us, and increase your mercy in us. Again, a plea for mercy and kindness from God, who is mercy and kindness himself. That in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent. We pray especially for the courage to face the hard times in our lives without giving in to despair, to hold on to our faith with fortitude. But with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Finally, we ask for the grace to be humble enough to do the will of God willingly, because we know that he wants to show love and mercy on us. Next time, what does it mean to have a good reason to believe in God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.